Good morning. <coughs> wow. <coughs> Excuse me. Good morning. <coughs> it's good to see you all this morning. Uh, it's not exactly a beautiful day outside, but it sure is inside. It's good to see all of you here. I hope everyone had a nice uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, that wonderful couple days ago, the parade, <coughs> unexpected. I, come, I was, I was going to go out uh, in my car, and I realized I couldn't get out because there was a parade going on. So I went to this Christmas parade and, and all that, and it was, it was really quite lovely. So uh, I'm getting used to Morris, but uh, parades and parties and all sorts of events, cars everywhere. Um, my uh, sister and uh, brother-in-law were here last night, but uh, they're just so deeply impressed with Morris. And my brother-in-law is a pastor, so he, he really enjoyed being here in this church, just to let you know um, how much they really love Morris. Uh, so we love Morris, we love our church, we're always excited to be in church, so I'm going to have a few announcements for you for this morning. Let's just off the top of the bat, we do have um, our altar flowers and radio broadcast sponsored, both of them, by Barbara Ewalt in memory of her parents. So the, we have her to thank for that this morning. You can see that there's a, a poinsettia order form uh, because Christmas is coming, if you can't tell. Thank you to everyone who decorated uh, the sanctuary for us for Advent. We are in Advent. You see the Advent wreath that's available uh, to us this morning, and we'll be lighting our first candle of hope. So <clears throat> along with that, we have other announcements. I do encourage you to take a look in the bulletin for those various announcements. But uh, Tim has a, a special announcements for us this morning. <clears throat> Good morning, church. Um, just a quick update on the choir director position. Um, the SPRC is pleased to announce that Daniel Replinger is going to be our new choir director, and he's in the house. So Daniel, would you mind just standing up and give Daniel a hand? And We welcome Daniel uh, to this position, and we look forward to the great things he can bring to us uh, for, as a choir director. Thanks, Daniel. So that's an exciting announcement. Um, Daniel's been working with our bell choir already, and it, uh, his wife Haley, is that right, Haley? So um, the reason I mention that is that following the service today, we don't have Sunday school or children's or anything like that for this kind of uh, Thanksgiving weekend, but Pastor Isla and I, therefore, are free. So we're going to be going after the service with anybody who's been visiting the church who'd like to go, like to get to know us. So we have some folks that are coming. Uh, Daniel, if you want to call Haley and say to come on on after church, we'll take the two of you to breakfast or brunch, however you want to think of it. Um, and anybody here who might be visiting, you just jump in. It's you're our guests, and we're going to be going to um, Sherwood Oaks. Uh, following the service. So we're going to shake your hands quickly because, frankly, I'm hungry. <laughs> so looking forward to that. Uh, are there any other announcements that I may have neglected? I don't believe so. So let us prepare for worship as we uh, listen to and enjoy this prelude.
Would you stand with me and others as you are able as we sing our opening hymn, Come, Thou Font of Every Blessing. That's number 400. may be seated. As I said, we have our lighting of our first Advent candle. Uh, the Smith family will be lighting the candle this morning. Morning. Good morning. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We are glad. Whether we drove or climbed up, whether we logged in or tuned in, we are glad that we are here with this community, with this family. It is a place of joyful hope, of radical welcome. It is a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many peoples shall come and say, come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the Lord of, ja of the God of Jacob. The God may teach us God's ways and that we may walk in God's path. Today, we light this candle of Advent, the candle of hope. We put our hope in, in the one to come, the promise who gave, who comes from God to bring good news of salvation. We hope in the one who will lead us to walk in the light of the Lord. We hope, we hope he will not let us, let us live in dark valleys, but on the high mountain of God. Amen. If you can stand, please join me in the call to worship. 
a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make God's path straight. Every valley will be filled and every mountain will be leveled. Be made straight. The rough and rocky ways will be smoothed. All will see the salvation of God. See the light from on high. The dawn is breaking. The Lord is coming. Our Lord of hope is coming. You may be seated. Please join me in the unison prayer. God of hope, who brought love into this world, be the love that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought joy into this world, be the joy that dwells between us. God of hope, the rock that we stand upon, be the center, the focus of our lives always, and particularly this Advent season. The children may come forward. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm so happy you came forward. I know it's hard to come up here and sit in front of everyone, right? Kind of? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> well, I brought something to show you, and um, I thought it was so pretty. Would you like to look at it? It's actually an ornament for the tree. And uh, somebody far away in Ghana made it. But before I tell you why they made it and why I have it, I want to ask you, how was your Thanksgiving? Good. OK. Lily, you had a good Thanksgiving too? Yeah? OK. Did you guys all have your favorite foods? No, you didn't. <laughs> I'm not going to look at Pauline. Or Thai. <laughs> okay, no, you didn't, but you, you had a lot of food on the table, I'm sure, right? Yeah? Okay. Well, I know I had some of my favorite foods, not all of them. Everybody wants their favorite food, right? But, you know, when we were all having our Thanksgiving, we are reminded that not everyone in the world has food on their tables. Not everyone in the world has a lot of food they can put together for a celebration. And it kind of tells us to be thankful for what we have, right? That's why we celebrate Thanksgiving, we give thanks. So, you know, this last week, and I know Lily went with us, and Sierra went with us, and some other folks went with us from the church to this place called Feed My Starving Children. And it's a place, uh, it's, a, it's an organization, and. Uh, what they do is they invite people to come and package food. And that food is then distributed in different parts of the world where there isn't enough food. And when there isn't enough food, children are the ones who suffer the most. Because when you can't eat uh, enough, then your body really doesn't grow and then you get sick. So we were just reminded when we were helping out at this uh, organization to package food, that we need to be always, not just be thankful for all that we have, but give of ourselves. If we are given much, we are asked to give much in return. So in some ways, those persons that, that food went to in different parts of the world, they made small things that were brought back to this country as a token of thank you. So this particular one came from Ghana, and it w I thought it was so pretty, because if you notice, there's small little um, beads in there that are sewn together in that heart. 
But what I want you to um, take home with you today is the idea that God is asking us to be grateful, and in return, we are asked to give back to others in every way and every form we can. So can I ask you to do something this coming week? A small, a small, a try it, try doing this. So I have a packet of candy with me. I mean, I'm gonna give you one for yourselves, and then I want you to pick one to give to somebody else. Maybe somebody at school, maybe some, someone that you know, and just tell them that God loves them. Do you think you can do that? Yeah? Okay, very good. How about you, you guys pick your own bag? How about that? So pick one for yourself so you can not feel tempted to take from the other bag. But, you know, take a bag to give to someone else. Do you have two bags? Take another one. The one to give away. All right. Lily, you want to take two as well? Okay. Very good. And then maybe next time when you come to Sunday school, you can tell us what happened when you gave it away. All right? Okay, let's, let's, let's say a short prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this Thanksgiving weekend. We thank you that we were all got together, and we had a wonderful time, and we had a lot to eat. Lord, we ask that you continue to help us to be givers like you have given us and help us to serve others in your name because as you have loved us teach us to love others as well we pray this in jesus name amen all right thank you for coming and maybe if somebody else wants to come and take a bag of candy and give it to somebody else they're welcome to there are plenty of bags in there
and a star will brighten the sky. Songs of joy will echo on high. We will know the moment is here, the child of love and peace. We continue now with uh, prayers. Now, prayers are can be many things. They can be prayers of joy. Uh, they can be prayers of concern for one another. But they're always prayers of hope. Hope for one another. Hope founded in Christ. Hope founded in our Lord. And so we are filled with prayers of hope for today as we've lit the hope candle in our advent wreath we begin with thanksgiving though uh, thanksgiving for all that we have been able to enjoy this past week uh, from parades to thanksgiving meals uh, to beautiful weather that we have enjoyed there's so many ways that we are not only thankful but hopeful for what is to come so we enter that season of hope uh, with various prayers. I would like to uh, share with you the fact that we have folks who are have returned home from the hospital. Ray is home, Millie is home, and Rance uh, is here with us this morning. And he, he has a joy to, to share with us. Thank you, my church family, for the flowers and cards. And so he's here with us today, filled with um, joy and thanks. We also pray for those who are in need. Judy Mumson has, wants us to pray for her son, Joel, who's having relational issues. And pray for all those who suffer from mental health issues. Um, we are um, also uh, looking forward to these coming weeks, um, and particularly for Christmas. So in that spirit of anticipation, hope, and joy, um, may we be in a spirit of prayer. We're going to begin our prayers with a time of silent prayer, and then we'll return to pray together. Dear Lord, you thought of us, thought of us so much that you would send your son. So we think of one another as well. We think of Leroy, who this past week fell and broke four ribs. A tough Thanksgiving for him and now a need for healing. We think of those who have recently emerged from the hospital to return home. Still, healing is needed. And we think of those in our church and many here who are in need of prayers and healing. But we offer these prayers because we are people of hope. We hope 
out of an experience of having our hopes fulfilled. That you have brought us together. We had hoped that we could find a place to be together and to worship and to love one another. And so our hope is fulfilled here in this church and in this place. Lord, we give you thanks for the fulfillment of so many prayers and hopes and all the joy that we experience by being together. Hear our prayers, be with us, and fill us mostly with your hope this day for this season, for our world, and for our lives. Amen. And may we finally join together in that prayer of hope and love that the Lord has provided for us to pray each week as we pray our Lord's Prayer, saying these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So come, let us all now give of our tithes, gifts, and offerings. And on behalf of the church, myself and Pastor Keg would like to thank all of you who have uh, given in the offering plate or give electronically or made pledges. Thank you for giving to your church. Second Corinthians says, each of you shall give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So please let us give cheerfully.
Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks because indeed you are a God of grace, you are a God of mercy, and you are a God that provides. Lord, we thank you for all what your people have given to your house of worship, your house of prayer. We ask that you may extend your hand of blessing upon all of us. Let your hand of blessing be upon the ministry of this church that they may not just be blessed here, but blessed beyond its ministries to the reach of this community, all around Morris and beyond. Thank you, Lord Heavenly Father. In Jesus Christ's blessed name we pray. Amen. The scripture today is from Isaiah 7, 13 through 14, and 40, verses 3 through 5. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear his son and shall name him Emmanuel. In verses 3 through 5, chapter 40, a voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make a straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rush rough places at plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Can I just say that I'm so happy to hear a baby in the crowd? For someone who has had five kids, that's just background music. <laughs> so thank you for bringing that beautiful baby to worship this morning. So yes, we are in the first Sunday of Advent, and of course our sanctuary is so beautiful. I love just the green and gold, so classy. Um, really, great job to the team who decorated. Uh, our sanctuary it does look very inviting, uh, very festive. But I would like to linger a little bit to this uh, Thanksgiving weekend that we've had. I'm sure you all have a fresh memory of your Thanksgiving meal and all the things that went along with it with family and friends. 
Uh, my own family, uh, especially my young adult kids, were planning to go downtown to see the parade, um, but they were not able to. But lo and behold, we had a parade right here, and it was such a surprise. And uh, we came out and we saw the parade. We went and saw the lighting in the in the park, and it was just a great time of fun. Uh, it's very unexpected, but very what a blessing it was indeed. So yes, we do live in a time of contrasts. I believe that uh, again and again, you see so much contrast happening all the time. You know, I feel that um, in our own country, although there are so many struggles that our nation is going through, there are a few things that are very, very prominent. And one of them is the rising, uh, increasing cost of living. Uh, inflation is everywhere. And then, of course, COVID variant is still in the air. You know, I got a news from uh, one of my friends who, live, who is a teacher in China, and she is in a lockdown for the last whole week. So yes, these things are right there, but look at the other side. And then we have vaccines that are freely available. And then wherever you go, you see now hiring signs. There are more now hiring signs than you can count. So indeed, there are contrasts everywhere. In our personal lives, it is easy to point out that there are many things that may not be going right. But then, if you want to look at the glass half full, there are many things that are going well, which cannot be taken for granted. In my opinion, this is the time in, in the year that we cannot miss the message of attitude of gratitude. It's such an essential message. As my late father-in-law used to say, count your blessings one by one. That was one of his famous quotes all the time. And when I was younger, it, it did, I did not pay so much attention to it. But now the more I think of it, he's right. Because you never know when one of those blessings may not be there tomorrow. So count your blessings one by one. So I don't know how many of you have seen the Charlie Brown peanut uh, cartoons this last weekend, uh, but I got to read one of them. You know, I love Charlie Brown peanuts because they have some really cute, profound wisdom. That, that, that is to be had, I must say. I'm very impressed with it. But let me read to you one of these uh, uh, cartoon clips. Uh, Charlie Brown is uh, bringing Snoopy his dinner on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, but it was just the, his usual dog food. And Snoopy looked at his bowl and said, this isn't fair. The rest of the world today is eating turkey with all the trimmings, and all I get is dog food? Because I'm a dog, and all I get is dog food? You know, Snoopy always had an attitude. But he stared at his food for a while, and then he said, I guess it could be worse. I could be a turkey. <laughs> so just some wisdom from peanuts. So we have to enter this new Advent season with a thanksgiving, praise to God for what we have. But then there's another way to give thanks. Because today, the Smith family lit the uh, uh, candle of hope for us. And when you read on what this candle of hope really means, uh, many theologians say this is a candle that the, our, our Methodist tradition celebrates as the prophetic candle. Not just any hope, but the prophetic hope. It is because the Advent season always starts with um, readings from the prophetic words of the prophet Isaiah. And those are the readings that Gail read for us this morning. And this prophetic hope is not just the hope that is just generally given, you know, willy-nilly, or maybe if you see it in a religious context, a hope of, you know, life eternal. But it is also hope in the very present. But before we get there, let me just say that Isaiah has so many prophetic 
uh, announcements of the Messiah to come that fit to the T to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Isaiah 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, which we all know means God is with us. So conservatively, theologians say that Jesus fulfilled at least 300 prophecies in his earthly ministries. And that is very unique. This fact is unique to the Christian faith. In comparison to other religions, both monotheistic and uh, polytheistic, which basically means uh, religions that believe in one God and those who believe in many gods, in both, if you study it, it is, comes out very clear that the Christian faith uniquely has prophecies that have come about compared to the others that have little to none. But I would like to say it in a different way. I think it affirms us that God has a plan of salvation in motion that we can all trust in. We can all trust him. When life is hard, when life gives us some very hard knocks, when the tidal waves of skepticism and doubt stand up all around us to threaten our faith in God, we are asked to trust the eternal hope in God. The same hope that, that was presented to the people of Israel way back in the time of Isaiah, 700 years before he predicted the birth of Christ. The same hope that was available to the people or the churches that Paul had established in the early church, close to over 2,000 years ago. And the same hope that was available to our forefathers and our foremothers. The same hope, when time is tough, God makes something good out of bad. God is still in the business of bringing good out of evil. In this world, we may not be able to see this a big picture that only God sees, the panoramic picture of history only God sees. Because God is at work to make good come from bad. Some people think that it is easy to understand if you see it as what they call, some theologians call it the ripple effect in history. A ripple effect, in other words, the work of God in and among human beings to bring the purposes of God in salvation. And this ripple effect has a small example in the Bible. We can actually have many of those, but let me just point to this one of them. You know, the Joseph of uh, Joseph's story in the book of Genesis, when he was um, out of sheer jealousy and uh, evil of, in their heart, his brothers sent him to, into slavery into Egypt. But by God's grace, he is raised up to be second in command to Pharaoh. And then um, many decades later, a famine comes in that region. And lo and behold, his, his family has to travel all the way from the land of Canaan to Egypt to look for food. And here is Joseph in the right position to help them. And they survive. So the act that started with evil intentions, God made it end up being serving the good of the family, not just to Joseph, but to the extended family, and they all survived. So we never know when something bad happens, how it's going to ripple effect, reach out in God's hand to bring the good that God is looking for. So yes, these ripple effects are many places in the world. If you have the intentions to look at them, you will find them. I believe one of the ripple effects that is very much present all the time is uh, the, the message of Martin Luther King Jr. You know, his life sacrifice continues to have ripple effect all over the world. I knew about him, read about him way back in Pakistan when, you know, I had no idea I would be living in this country. Ripple effects. 
This is also why we call, we are called to put our trust in God's hands in all the stages of our lives, all the ages of our lives, in the good and the bad, in the beautiful times and in the ugly times, in times of doubt and skepticism and in times of faithfulness because we believe that God will bring something good from all of it and will redeem us into life eternal. Let me share with you a very interesting uh, Chinese parable. I think it kind of brings home the message that, or the point that I'm trying to make here. This Chinese parable uh, is very simple, but let me just share it with you. There's a farmer and his son who had a horse that they were using for their farm, uh, the only horse that is actually a stallion that they were using to earn a living. One day the horse ran away and the neighbors came around to the farmer and said, oh, how terrible. You had a terrible luck. Your horse has ran away. And what are you gonna do now? But the farmer replies, maybe so, maybe not. We'll see. A few days later, the horse returned home, leading a few other wild mares back to the farm as well. And the neighbors come around again shouting, your horse has returned, that's wonderful. And look, it has brought more horses to your home. Now you have more horses to help you on the farm. What great luck, said the neighbors. And the farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not. We'll see. Later that week, the farmer's son was trying to break one of the mares, and she threw him to the ground, and he broke his leg. The villagers cried, oh, what bad luck. Your son has broken his leg. There's no one else to help you in the farm. The farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not. We'll see. A few weeks later, the soldiers from the National Army marched through the village, recruiting all the able-bodied men for the army. The farmer's son wasn't, wasn't uh, ready because his leg was broken, so they left him. His injury was not going to recover in time, so let, they left him. And the neighbors came around and said, your boy was spared. What a tremendous luck you had. How great that he, cannot, he does not need to go to war. And then again, the farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not, we'll see so and so forth. But the point is, we can truly not expect any moment in our lives to dictate everything in our life because everything is in God's hand. The moral of story is that very few events can truly be judged as good or bad, lucky or unlucky, fortunate or unfortunate. In many cases, only time tells the whole story. All too often, like the farmer's neighbors, we are tempted to throw a lot of energy into things that look fantastic, you know, really good on the surface, but they may not pay off in the end. Equally, we can pass great judgment on things that really look bad on the surface, but they may end up producing great long-term results. It is all in God's hands who brings good out of bad. You know, Romans, uh, Paul in Romans 8 says, we all know that it, sorry, and we know that all things, I'll say it again, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purposes. So yes, <clears throat> we do, take our hope seriously. You know, Advent is not just a churchy word that we are reminded of, oh, it's a calendar word of Advent, you know, we're gonna start doing all our traditional things. But it is a word that encourages us to see a spiritual journey to the Christ child. I would like to use that picture maybe. Um, So yes, our prophetic hope lies in the God who is ready to take our bad moments and make them into good moments. Maybe we will not be able to see the end results, but we can trust in God that he is 
on task to bring about his purposes. Advent reminds us once again by Isaiah that we have to take this time seriously. Why? Because this is an invitation so that we never take for granted that Jesus, the God-man, has entered and broken into history and is available to us as a savior. So what does Isaiah say? Isaiah offers us another uh, a moment of introspection. You know, the words that are read from Isaiah 40 are actually an explanation of a highway to be prepared for God. Uh, it is actually a, a, a spiritual visual. It is called the highway of the Lord in which we welcome God's presence with us. And although he said this some 700 years before Jesus came to the northern kingdom of Israel, who had actually drifted away from God, and then they were uh, led into Babylonian captivity, and after 70 years, God brought them back to the city of Jerusalem. And Isaiah said these words, that make a highway for the Lord. Let the Lord come back and bring you back to his presence. But then here, John the Baptist picks it up in the, in the Gospel of Luke. And John the Baptist, who understood it so well what Isaiah was doing and how he was leading the people back to God, was also using the same words to prepare his people, or the people around uh, first century uh, uh, kin, uh, the land of Judea and Galilee to get prepared for Jesus, to get prepared for this Messiah that is to be born, to get prepared even before he was being baptized. Here is John using the same words. He says, the word of the Lord came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the country around Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the word of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of the one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight path for him. Every valley should be filled up, every mountain hill made low. The crooked road shall be straightened, the rough way smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. What is that? It is an invitation that we are called to do to make an introspection journey to the Christ child. And I know the minute this season has started, things will come our way. We are going to get busy. We are going to get distracted with all the things that we do in December to get ready for Christmas. But I invite you to take, give yourself a gift of what I would call presence presence, inviting God's presence in your life and being present to God in this four weeks of Advent. And take Isaiah's instructions uh, seriously, because that highway to the Lord is basically a path of devotion, a personal introspection to make ourselves available to what God is doing in our lives, to make God be seen in us and through us. So what are those instructions? Well, make straight paths for him, live righteously, making every effort to do what is right. If there are paths in our lives that are not straight, let us remember to make them straight. Get our act together. Every valley shall be filled in. God has given us so many gifts, so many uh, resources, and there are ways in which we are discouraged and we're depleted. We are asked to fill up those valleys, take courage, and use our talents for the good, for ourselves and for others. Every mountain and hill made low. If there are any arrogance in our lives, any false sense of pride that needs to be checked, let these be brought down to humility. The crooked road shall be made straight. If there is anything that is wrong or dishonest that makes us lack integrity, needs to be put right, made, need to be put straight, and the rough ways made smooth. If you've had any 
form of judgment to towards others and or prejudice or bias, we need to repent and become more grace giving and more forgiving and loving, just the way God has given us grace or shown us grace and forgiven us and has loved us. And what will this do to us? It will clean our heart for us to have a clear vision of what God is doing in us. I would always try to use uh, an example. This will become like the cleaning of our windshields, which we're gonna be doing a lot this season when the snow comes around. We clean our windshields so we can see clearly. So I invite you, take the instructions of Isaiah. Take the prophetic hope that is available to us seriously so that we can see clearly what God is doing in us and through us. Amen. So church, today as you grow from here, I hope your worship continues in your thoughts, in your words, and in your actions. And may God give you God-like moments between now and Christmas so that you would have real, real, genuine joy of celebrating who Jesus is in our lives now and in the life to come. Go in peace. Happy Sunday.